Hello, Abaddon Sentinel here again, and welcome back. Uh, this is my tired face. Uh, please ignore it, and please ignore the mess behind me. Uh, just pretend it's not there. Uh, today's video is about a painting competition that I entered last week at IQ Game Center in Huddersfield. Now, the theme for this was you paid £5 in. Uh, you were given a kit to build a Stormcast Liberator, I think it is. I'm not too familiar with Age of Sigma. I'm pretty sure it's a Liberator. Uh, you build it and obviously paint it. Now, you weren't allowed to modify it other than uh, putting it on a base, um, but as for painting, you could do just about anything you wanted. Uh, I'm going to be looking at my miniature and also a friend of mine's in uh, a little bit of detail, and uh, then I'll let you have a look at the other entries. Let's jump in and have a look at mine. So here we have two entries into the competition. Uh, the one on the left is mine, the one on the right belongs to a friend who's kindly given me permission to talk about it during this video. So I'll begin with my entry. I have to admit, I did not know much about Stormcast before this competition. I still don't, uh, but I do know a little bit more about their colour schemes and the uh, Storm hosts. So I decided to go with the Silent Host as the colour scheme for mine. Now, this is my first attempt at doing a non-metallic metal effect. Uh, it's not perfect. Uh, I'm pleased with it for a first go. There's a lot that I want to improve on it. Um, you know, get some smoothness in the blending, things like that. But I think it's pretty well. If anyone is wondering, so this gold effect on the shoulder pads, on the shield, and the hilt of the sword. Now that was done uh, using a combination of three colours, starting with Monfang Brown, and I think it's called Zamizi Dust. I can never remember exactly off the top of my head. I should have it here with me. Um, never mind. But Zamizi Dust and White Scar. And basically through a process of uh, mixing those together and gradually glazing on and layering on and things like that, uh, it builds up these nice transitions um, that you see you know, between the various highlights and shadows seen here on the shield as well. Um, it's quite a difficult technique, I have to admit. <laughs> um, it was definitely a learning experience trying to get the hang of it. Uh, obviously, I wouldn't say that I've completely got the hang of it now. Um, still got a lot of practice before I could say that I, you know, I, I can do that technique properly. Um, but for a first attempt, I'm pretty happy. For example, the hammerhead on the shield um, I did originally do that as if it was gold as well, but having then slept on it, and when I woke up the next day, um, the day of the competition actually, I needed to submit it that day, um, I was at work and had taken a picture of the shield, and I kept looking at it, and I was not happy, so the first thing I did when I came back was repaint it so that it was more of a steel colour, and that one was actually done uh, with a mix of uh, Abaddon Black, White Scar, and um, what do you call it now? Thunderhawk Blue, that's the one. So just the, the smallest amount of Thunderhawk Blue, just to you know give, give it a little bit more of a steel look than simply uh, a grayscale. Um, you don't need a great deal of it on there uh, to, to, to add you know that, that little sheen, but it does make a hell of a difference. As you can see in comparison to the armour, which was done purely with um, a mixture of Eshin Grey and White, that, that those were the only two colours used for that. Uh, I think that was quite a mistake, to be honest. But again, I've learned from it. Um, it. It made it very difficult trying to make it look metal rather than stone. Now I have seen on other videos that um, it, is, it can be quite difficult sometimes when you're doing the transitions for non-metallic metal effects, when you're doing a steel colour or a silver colour, that kind of thing, if you're not doing the transitions right, it does end up looking a bit too stone. It looks dull rather than shiny um, with just some, you know, some transitions for highlighting. Now obviously for a non-metallic metal that's not really what you want so I went back and forth quite a bit with it trying to fi figure it out and 
get the uh, the proportions right. Um, I think I did okay in the end, um, but I would definitely do it a little bit different next time. I'd probably use a little bit of the Thunderhawk blue as well, like I did in here. I don't really know whether that, that is actually showing up well on camera. Um, I can see it nicely here in front of me, but uh, you'll have to let me know in the comments down below if you see what I mean by the, the touch of the Thunderhawk blue just helping to add that, that steel finish to it, uh, which is what I should have done for the sword as well. The sword is just done with uh, Eschen Grey white. Again, that's you know a, a very basic mixture, um, and it could have come off a lot worse than that, to be honest. Um, I'm quite happy with how the sword's turned out uh, with regards to the paints that I used for it. There's not much else to say about it, really. Uh, I could go into some more of the, the, the colours used, but um, it's a little bit less interesting. It's much more just standard uh, techniques used for that. Um, for example, on the handle for the sword and the dagger underneath, uh, it was just corn red, um, and then mixing a little bit of white in with it to do some, some highlighting. So nothing too complicated there. Uh, as you can see, the back of the armour, not quite as polished as the front. I could have spent a little bit more time on that. I probably should have spent a little bit more time on that, but um, I didn't. It's, a, again, something that I would change for next time. I would definitely uh, go over that more. Um, my main mistake, I think, I base-coated the armour with Eshin Grey. And... In order to give an idea where the shadows were going to be, I first painted uh, a mixture of Eshin Grey and Abaddon Black into where I thought the shadows were going to be to let me know. And I don't think I really brightened them up enough. It looks very, uh, very much like this. The the it, the the shine just disappears, and it shouldn't disappear. Uh, the reflection should just um, be darker. Again, a lesson for next time. I won't make that mistake. Um, I will lighten those up a little bit. I can get the contrast in. I can get to the white shine on the back of the calf and uh, make it look a little bit more like metal rather than, um, again, kind of looks a bit like stone on the back of his legs there. Okay. Now, my friend's model. His entry into the competition. Now, he is not... Um, you know, uh, uh, a long-time painter. Apparently, he's, he, he did do a little bit of painting about 10 years ago when he was quite young. Entering this competition was the first painting he'd done in, um, you know, around about a decade. So he decided, instead of trying to paint something perfect, trying to do anything technical, uh, he was going to give his a theme in order to give it a little bit of an edge. A lot of people did quite enjoy the theme. So, for example... I'm guessing you, you'll have probably figured out by now that it's it's a Christmas theme. But if you look here at the shield, so he's gone for his, his red and his green. Uh, he's put some gold trim on there. He's turned the hammer handle into a candy cane type effect. And then around the rim of the shield, he's just put all these little dots to simulate fairy lights. It's just nice little touches like that make things great. Um, and to be honest, even outside of a competition, things like this are great fun to paint and can you know make make a miniature stand out in an army if you want to do something like that. It doesn't even necessarily you know it doesn't have to be themed like Christmas or anything. But if you come up with a theme, there's lots of little touches you can do to make your model um, you know stand out that that little bit extra. Um, so obviously with the, a lot of it's the red and white theme yeah, he's gone for green on the tabard you know keeping keeping the theme strong one of the main things that most people miss uh, a few pick up on is in the back there of the shield I'll bring it too close it's going to get out of focus but um, in the back of the shield there he did actually paint in a naughty list with a few names crossed out. So just adding a little bit to the, the Christmas theme and the idea that possibly this is 
Santa Claus as a Stormcast Liberator. A lot of people liked it, like I say. Um, unfortunately for, for Connor, um, it didn't place in the competition. Um, they seemed to go with ones that had a bit more of a technical effect on them, something a little bit more complex than obviously the blocked in uh, colours. He has actually asked me for feedback on how he could take this kind of paint job further and actually improve on it to make it more like something that you know that would place in the competition. And the main thing obviously is making sure to do your highlighting, putting putting some lighting effects on there and things like that, uh, neatening up the paint job a little bit. And to be fair, he's done a, he's done a, a decent job of that. But um, you know, it could, it could be a little bit neater. Um, but again, all that kind of stuff comes with practice and painting for, uh, you know, uh, day after day, month after month, year after year, and getting some experience. Um, for example, mine, my little entry, um, I've been painting now on and off for probably about five or six years. Um, and it took me a long time to properly get into it before I started looking into the technical side of things, trying to figure out how to do other bits and pieces. And one thing I would say is don't be afraid to give something a try. Uh, I've, I've been afraid of trying non-metallic metal for a long time because I didn't think I'd be able to do the blending. Uh, I thought it was going to be too complicated for me. It was, you know, it was going to be it was going to be too hard. And then I entered this competition, and to be honest. I don't regret the decision to do non-metallic metal at all. I sat down, uh, I put other videos on. There's some there's some great videos out there on YouTube. I'll I'll put some links in the description. Uh, videos videos by uh, YouTubers such as Miniac or um, they're not active now, but the Painting Buddha channel. Uh, it's got some great videos where they cover the topics of uh, non-metallic metals, either from uh, an implementation point of view or from a theoretical point of view. Um, and just watching stuff like that can really help your your uh, work as you're trying to do this kind of stuff. And uh, yeah, I've been given permission by IQ Games to use some of the pictures that they took. Um, so I'll be putting some of those up on the screen um, for you to have a look at some of the other entries to the competition. I will start off with the first, second and then third place. And after that I will... I'll put them up uh, in you know a random order, uh, just for you to see what other kind of things were uh, submitted, and I'll uh, give you a couple of thoughts on each of them. So here we have the uh, first place. Um, obviously, it's a very similar colour scheme to what I did. Um, I don't know if they've specifically gone to Silent Host or if they uh, simply like the colour scheme. Um, but uh, yeah, it, it was it was quite interesting when I uh, saw that someone else had uh, entered a similar color scheme, um, and I have to say it did a very very good job. Um, the bit that I'm most impressed about, and I spoke to the guys that were judging um, a couple of days after as well, and all three of us um, just just can't believe how crisp and straight the lines on the shield are, where he's done that uh, that little fade effect. The lines that outline it, I, I cannot, I, I can't do a line that straight. I, I'd have to keep going back and forth, uh, you know, painting in um, where I'd accidentally gone over, uh, over where I was supposed to be going, and it'd be an absolute nightmare. But uh, yeah, he's he's done a very good job. Um, it's very tidy. Uh, it was one of the criteria that they were they were judging on is the tidiness, uh, the overall look of the model. Again, it's got a very nice look to it. It's quite eye-catching. Um, he's made a nice effect on the sword. Obviously, it's it's not 100% visible in uh, in this picture, um, but yeah, he's he's done a bit of a lightning effect on the sword, which uh, looks very impressive. And uh, yeah, um, there's not much more to say about it. Very similar to mine. I've already talked through the color scheme on that. But yeah, what what else is there to say? It's just a very it's a very good paint job. Uh, he the, the the guy that entered. Uh, this particular one, obviously, you can see he's gone for the actual metallics as opposed to a like a non-metallic metal effect. And with that, he's been able to give uh, much more uh, crisp, defined um, edges and and, and colouring in the, uh, the the blocks and things like that. So 
Um, again, I, w I was very impressed when I saw this one um, and knew that I was in trouble <laughs> so as soon as I'd seen it, uh, along with a couple of the others as well, actually, that we'll, we'll come to later on. Um, but yeah, uh, then next up, uh, you've already seen, so I won't talk much about it, but second place was mine. Like I say, very similar colour scheme to the previous one. Uh, only real, well, the main difference being, uh, obviously, slightly different shields. Obviously, I've gone for that uh, white stripe down the middle. Uh, it's the official Silent Host uh, shield scheme, as opposed to this uh, effect that he's gone for. Um, I've done the non-metallic effect, as opposed to using the metallic paints, um, which, like I say, you can you can see in the picture, and you probably saw in the video earlier on, um, the edges are a little bit messy on it from where I've done a lot of the blending and things like that. Um, I, I still think I kept it fairly tidy, um, but there was obviously that difference between the two of them as well. Um, one thing uh, I didn't mention earlier was the battle damage that I put on the shield, um, which is, is quite simple to do, to be honest. Uh, you just use uh, a dark color, a dark base color for what you've done elsewhere on the shield uh, to make a thin line. You then use your highlight color for you know that part of the shield, and uh, just put a, 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 another thin line just at the bottom of it. Um, it's it's not that difficult. The, the main difficult part of it is controlling your hand so that you you, you don't make a, a squiggly line or make it too thick. Um, but with a, it, it, you know just with a bit of practice. Um, you can quite easily get get a grip of um, how to do this kind of thing. Uh, so third place uh, was this one. Personally, to me, obviously this this particular color scheme for the majority of the miniature it didn't stand out. However, what he has attempted here is um, what is referred to as a as a, an OSL effect, uh, which I rem if I remember correctly stands for object source lighting. Um, which essentially means his hammer head is glowing and it is catching on the sharp edges of uh, the other parts of his armor, say on his chest and his shoulder plate, um, you know, that are quite close to it. So it's, you know, it's, it's quite a nice effect to go for. Um, obviously, he's done a, a bit of a glow on the shield as well. Um, the blending uh, on this could have been done a little bit better. I don't actually, I mean, if it's wanting to be a smooth blend, obviously it could have been done better. I did actually look at it again uh, a few times, trying to make my mind upon it, and it actually looks with with um, the, the the blending being the way that it is, it does actually look like it could um, be some kind of um, roiling, churning blue uh, flame uh, or you know magma type effect while not being exactly the way that i would have got, uh, gone for it I, you know i would have tried to do the the smooth blend does actually um kind of work a little bit um could do with being a a, a little bit um tidier uh, i think um on certain parts of it um but but other than that i um, you know i quite appreciate the the effect that he's gone for there uh, i don't think anyone else attempted uh, something like that um so you know well done to this guy for for, uh, for doing it. So after this, there, there weren't any uh, other placements. I'm just going to quickly go through some of the others and give a, a couple of um, points about what I, what I think of them. So next up, uh, this one was another one that I was a little bit threatened by <laughs> when, it, when it came in. It's a nice it's a nice paint job, nice color scheme. Uh, I love the blending on the shield, um, to be honest. It's a, it's a very smooth blend, um, which... You can kind of see on the picture, but in person, just looks absolutely amazing. Uh, green and red, obviously, uh, uh, complementary colours. Uh, so, you know, it's quite an eye-catching colour scheme to see those colours next to each other. And then with the starkness of the white shoulder pads on top, this, the, uh, every time I walked past the cabinet and looked in, this was one of the models that caught my eye. And I'm liking the fact, obviously, they used the spare hammer from the kit that they were given as a little bit of extra scenery at the bottom, you know, a, a fallen friend or some, someone nearby. Okay, uh, this one, uh, it's a slightly more basic colour scheme. Again, lovely fade on the shield. I, I quite liked this one, um, just, just just for that 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 uh, blend. The brassiness of the shoulder pad and the helmet, I also quite liked. It was it's nice to get the, the difference between 
um, that and the gold on the shield, say, um, you, you can see the difference from this picture um, that, that that top of the shield uh, is is quite a nice warm gold and then when you're looking at the the shoulder pad and the way that's been shaded and highlighted and the helmet and that's the way that's been shaded and highlighted uh, it's quite a hard brassy effect um so it's, in, it's it's nice to see uh the, those two next to each other um personally for me the um highlights on some of the edges are, are a little bit thick it depends what kind of effect he was going for i suppose um, but personally, for me, they, they, they're just a bit too thick. I prefer to try and get the, the lines fairly tidy and thin um, so that they, they, they are just on the edge. But yeah, no, overall, um, I think it's, it's quite a nice the painted miniature. Uh, obviously, I've already been through this one as well. Uh, it's my friends uh, who did the Christmas theme. Liked by a lot of people as they were looking in the cabinet and thought it was an, uh, a cool idea. Uh, obviously, unfortunately, uh, didn't place in the competition. Um, hopefully uh, with some practice and uh, learning a few more techniques and things like that uh, it'll be doing similar stuff but um, getting, getting it to a standard where you know it's really really pulling the, the, the judges attention okay this one I love the fact they've gone for the two hammers uh, I'm loving the, the, the blood on, on those hammers this guy's definitely been seeing you know he's seen some action the color scheme I'm not. I'm not sure about it, simply because it's all there's. There's nothing amazingly that stands out against anything else. The nice colours, I like. To, you, you can you can't see it properly on here, um, but you know the the layering on the shoulder pad to get that transition from uh, like a darker grey up to the white is quite nice. Um, but personally, the the, the colours on this they're a bit too bland. Um, I'm not sure. I'm not sure that's the right way of putting it. It's the only way I can think of at the moment. It's a bit bland. It all kind of homogenizes into the one image, um, if you understand what I mean. You know, it'd be interesting to see in future competitions what this particular person comes up with, because uh, I think they've got some nice ideas. That, you know, with what they want to do. Um, like I said, the blood on the hammers is is, is a nice touch. Um, the fact that he looks like he's um, striding forwards, ready to get into another scrap. Uh, I'm quite liking that as well. So, you know, it's, um, it'd be nice to see because these competitions they're planning on doing, um, I think every couple of months or something like that, um, just just to get people painting, essentially. And it's worked because I hadn't painted for a little while, as you can probably tell from the lack of uh, finished Abaddon video. Okay, so another friend of mine did this one. Now, he is a very good painter, and... Um, this isn't the finest example of his work simply because his original entry was uh, chewed by his dog. So he quite quickly had to put a second one together. Um, so for the fact that he's rushed and he's uh, had to put the base together and things like that, um, he did he did quite well um, to get this in. I think, the, to, be, to be honest, the best thing about this to me is the effect on the sword. The nice transition from dark to light green uh, with those extra highlights along the, the sharp edges, the hard edges, just helps that stand out and kind of draws your attention to that. It's obviously a, a focal point of the miniature. And it's probably one of the most interesting bases for, for any of the entries as well. Um, the fact that he actually built that little wall and platform for, it to, for him to stand on. Um, so I was quite impressed by that when I saw it as well. Okay, so this one's a fairly simple one. Nice gold and silver. Can't go wrong with a bit of gold and silver. Possibly could have done with the the paint thinning down a, a little bit more. You can see 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 some uh, brush strokes on the thighs and on on the parts where they've done um, the white. But overall, I think the the gold and silver makes makes a nice color scheme. Uh, it's a shame I can't quite see the shield on this. I can't remember exactly what it looks like. But yeah, it's a, it's a nice color scheme. Um, uh, I'd be interested to see. What what color schemes they come up with it for the future competitions? Um, it's not it's not going to be liberators as far as I'm aware. It's, you know they they're going to change what what model they ask people to paint each time. Uh, so that should be interesting. The only sad thing about this for me is uh, the fact that it's not had a, a base on it. But I you know I, I don't know whether this person has the, uh, the the materials for basing and things like that. Yeah. So um I, you know I wasn't 
I wasn't entirely sure that most people were going to be doing uh, bases for them. I wasn't sure how how hard people were going to um, go at the competition. So yeah, I almost <laughs> didn't base mine, and I'm glad I did. Okay, so here we have a traditional color scheme for the Liberators. It's the it's the, it's the main artwork that you'll see uh, whenever you uh, look at the Stormcast um, battle term, is it? I think it is. I can't remember for Sigma. But when you look at the Stormcast, generally, if you already Google Stormcast, this is generally what you'll see. Uh, it's executed uh, pretty nicely. Uh, you know, they've got they've got all the pieces in there: the the gold armor, the blue shoulder pads, the blue knee pads, um, the the white lightning stripes. Uh, so yeah, very well done. Uh, I'm liking the fact that he's got the shield resting down at the bottom there, just in case he needs. You know, he gets a hammer knocked out of his hand and needs to grab that quickly. Uh, it's a nice base as well. Um, nice rocky base with those skulls uh, just placed down there. Interesting to see what they come up with for the next competition. Okay, and another traditional uh, color scheme. We can see the shield on this one. We've gone for the gold and silver lightning, uh, main blue shield. Yep, yeah, uh, again, standard color scheme. Um, can't go wrong with a standard color scheme. Uh, it's the one that everyone recognizes. They've not done the same kind of basing, obviously, as the previous one, but I think that previous one was a little bit special with, with, with the basing. Um, uh, I, I quite liked that. Uh, it worked well with the, the colour scheme as well, not drawing too much attention away from uh, the miniature itself. The only downside with this is obviously where the, the hand connects to the arm that's holding the hammer. Uh, I'm, I think, looking at that, it's it's uh, glue that's been overspilled, which is a bit of a shame because that you know can mess with the, uh, the, the paint if they've used plastic glue. I think that might just be super glue. Uh, that's gone a little bit white there, but um, it, it's a bit of a shame because obviously it's, it, it takes away from um, the the rest of the model when you can see something like that. But it happens, you know, accidents happen. Um, they, this person's obviously tried to deal with it as best they can. Uh, so you know, hopefully in the future when they've got their other competition entries, if they if they carry on doing it, they'll um, just uh, be you know be a bit more. Uh, careful with the glue in and things like that. Uh, there are things you can do, obviously, if, if pieces break and you get bits of glue in places where it shouldn't be. But it depends how much time you give yourself as well, considering uh, I left mine a little bit last minute for a lot of the details. There you have it, the IQ Game Center painting competition. Let me know down in the comments what you would pick for your top three out of those. Don't forget to check out those links in the description for the non-metallic metal videos I mentioned earlier. Uh, I'll also leave IQ Game Center's uh, website down there. So if you enjoyed this video, remember to hit the like button, comment down below, and subscribe to my channel if you want to see more. I'll see you later.